Hey coders, welcome to 2024 and welcome to Colin Parallel. Wanna build an API in .NET 8 but scared of jargon and spaceships? Relax, this series takes you from zero to launching your own API, step by step like Legos for adults. Forget prior coding, we'll explain everything clearly with reward examples and soon you'll be a confident API builder ready to unleash your creation. So hit the subscribe and join the adventure. We'll code, learn, and have a blast. Any questions, drop a comment below. So we're going to open our Visual Studio and we're going to build a task management API. So we're going to create an API that will add task, edit task, delete task, update task. So I'll select a new project. And I will choose the API, the Core Web API. If it's not there, you can search for it here. Then I'm gonna click Next. This will be a task um, .API. Next, it will be Donate 8 long-term support and we're gonna hit Create. And Visual Studio will create for us the project. This is a beginner-friendly course, so we're going to start off slowly. So I'm going to remove everything that comes with Microsoft and we're going to start from scratch. For every API, you're going to have data, a place where you want to manage your data. In our case, we have a task, that to do item that we want to manage. So that in the MVC falls under the M, which is the model. Then we have the controller. The controller is more of a facilitator. The controller links the outside world to our application. An API is just an opening to the outside world. It's an application programming interface. It's a window through which other applications will be able to access our task. Our tasks would be able to create a task, could be able to delete a task. So that's the role of the controller. It opens up to the endpoints. And then it also should know what type of model to get. For instance, if somebody outside says, I want to get all tasks, then the controller should know what to do and what to request to get. So it has to get the model and show all the list of tasks to the outside world. And we have the view. So usually the view is to do with what people see, but an API does not have a view as per se because it's just data transfer. But we would still, in our view, would be the data that comes out. So that could be JSON, it could be XML, or it could be whatever we define. But in our case, we use JSON because that's what's mostly used in most APIs. So for us, we need to come up with a model. But as you see, the one folder we have there is controller. So we'll create our own, our own folder and we'll call that folder models. And within the models, we'll have whatever models should be in our API. So in our case, we're building a to-do list, a task. So I'll create a model, I'll call it to-do. So it will be a class, which would be a, a to-do, to-do item, for instance. I'll create add. And all we want to have is, keep it simple, we want to have an ID that will uniquely identify that item. We want to have a title. Um, and we want to have a description. What is this to do item B? But for me, the most important would also be having a Boolean, which says it's completed because we want to know that this task we have added, uh, have we completed. So this is what the model is going to give out. Then we need to have the controller so that when the outside world is going to ask us, we can provide and that is handled by the controller. Then we're going to create a controller. It defaults on, on MVC, but we want the API controller. We'll do the MVC, which is to do with the actual views uh, in the next video where we're going to consume this API. So I'll say add, and I'll call this tasks controller. And it's empty. So at best, an API does, if, does four things fundamentally. An API, you can create data you can um, read data you can update the data and you can also delete the data on a database 
But in the concept of an API, we call them HTTP verbs, and they are slightly different. So we call it POST in API. We call it GET if to read. If it's to update, we call it PUT, or it can be PATCH. PATCH is just something that it's a partial update. Then DELETE is just DELETE. So essentially what you're doing is you're doing these four things. But the question might be, where are we doing them? We need to have somewhere where we can store our to-do items. So ideally, what you have is a database. But since this is a beginner course, we're going to use just a list for now so that we can just focus on the API side. Then the next video, we can bring in the database itself and see how it integrates. So I'm going to create something simple. It will be an in-memory in memory storage for simplicity. Nothing, nothing, nothing for simplicity. Nothing fancy. It will be a private, uh, a list of a to-do item. Let's bring that in. Uh, and uh, I'll put an underscore there. And thanks to the new C-Shop, we can just simplify that to this. So this list is empty. There's nothing there. It will, it will act like our data store. The only drawback is once the API stops running, it will lose everything there. So our usually we, we, we build them get, post, but the order doesn't matter. So I'll start with get. And something interesting would be this, API slash tasks. Where is that coming from? You will see that the controller is just a class, but there is something we've added there, an, an annotation. We're saying API slash controller. So controller will take the name of the controller. So the API comes from that API. The tasks comes from the controller. We just remove the controller. So that's where the route is. So we have to, because the route would be similar even for the post they get, there has to be a way to distinguish. So this is what this is a controller. What we create here, they'll be called action methods. They're just like a C-sharp function, but in this context, they're called action methods. So we we'll have to say, we are going to have an HTTP GET. And what the GET will do, it will return all the items. And there's something called OK there. So OK is just something to do with how APIs respond. APIs have to respond in a, in a standardized way. So if the request was successful, it gives you an OK, or it is what we call a status 200. So this one is going to return a status 200. So this gives us all APIs. What if I want to get a single item? So the question would be, what is unique about the item for me to get, a, to get it? What keeps it unique is an ID. So we're going to leverage that ID. And we're going to tell our, our HTTP to say that uh, there will be an ID. This ID is dynamic. It will change. So it has to anticipate that. Then and then we are going to have a method that is going to say public action result. It will return a to do item. And what will be the thing we'll give it? We'll give it an ID and it will go to the to do items list and search using first of default if the ID exists. If it doesn't, if, if it's null, then we'll give them what we call a 404 not found. So they also know that what you're looking for does not exist. Again, APIs. It's, it's about a RESTful standard, giving you uh, a standardized approach. If they exist, then give them a 200 and give them the list of the um, items. We want to create. So it will be a post. So you see that this, this endpoint and that endpoint are just the same. They are all the same. What would distinguish the difference would be the verb. So for us to create, it will be interesting. We're going to give it an item because if you want to create a list, if you want to create a task, we have to give it a to-do item. And that item will just add to the list. So we're saying to-do items would add. And this is interesting. We are not returning an OK or a not found. Why? We want to return somewhere that once we create an item, we want to know where it exists in our API. So you see that we're saying create art. The name of the action is 
this action, which is a get, and it takes an ID. So it will return the item we've created over here. It will also return where it was created at. If you had wanted here, you would have just done return, OK, and you could have just given the to-do item. What that could have done is it could have just returned the item, which is OK. But we want to show them where that item exists in case they want to navigate to that. So this is fine, but this is more professional as it will tell you where it exists and you can navigate to that. And I will show you the example. So we'll do that return. Uh, the next business is for us to, to put. And put is update. But for you to update something, you have to see if that thing exists. So that's why you see that this would be similar to the get. Because first of all, you have to get that thing and check if it's null or not. If it exists, then you want to proceed to edit that thing. So you see that the concept here would be similar. would also give it an ID because that is what we would use. The difference this time would be we are going to, we are going to give it the ID. The ID would be there to uniquely identify it. Then we'll give it also a body. That is the new change we want to do to the to the to the item unlike the post all we did was take whatever came and we added to the list this time we're saying get me the I first of all check to see if the id this id is equal to the id inside of this then let's check to see if it exists if it if it doesn't exist then return it and not found you cannot edit what doesn't exist then if it does exist then we're saying three things should change. The title should change, the description should change, and that is completed. The ID usually doesn't change because that is a primary key and you can change that in a database, but you can change the others. And you also don't want the ID changing because these are what uniquely identifies a person. This could be your social security number. And you, all you wanna change is your surname. Maybe you're married as a lady and you wanna take your husband's name. So you want people to be able to change that, but not change their social security number. So. If it's created, it will be a no content. And no content is also part of the success because everything to do with 200 is a success. But it just says, there's no need for us to give you anything. But the edit was done. Then finally, we also want to delete. So delete should be similar to update. Only that all we have to see is, does this task exist? And if it does exist, can we get it? Yes, if we can get it, remove it. So it will be similar to put and get but what we'll do is we're going to say okay give us the id and search in the list if the id exists if it doesn't exist then tell the tell the people that this is not found and if it is found then remove that thing on the on the list that way will return in our content to say that was done. Now let, let us run this and see uh, what we have. So when you run it, something beautiful will come. This is what we call Swagger. So this is an API client. So instead of you using something like Postman, you will start using your API out of the box. You might wonder where does that come from? If we go back to our project, you'll see that we have dependencies and one of the dependencies there is packages and that's a swashbuckle so this is something that microsoft puts it there so that you will start testing your apis right out of the box so that's swagger and you see that it has created five endpoints so it has known that this application has five endpoints and you'll see that there's the variable where they get task and this is a schema so that whoever is using an api they can just see the schema of what they need so that they don't struggle to consume API and we'll see how we're going to use an MVC application to view the tasks on a separate project. So I'm going to say, let's create a task. Uh, we'll give you an ID of one. And what we want to do, uh, we might want to go to the gym and this could be cardio day and would we'll say, we're not there yet. So we'll say execute. Now, when I execute, something will happen. It will say 201. 201 means, if you go to the post, 201 means created at. 
it will return the body there, which is this guy. Now you might wonder, where is this? For you to see this, you will have to go to the response headers. There's the body, then the headers. On the, on the headers, you see that there's a thing called location. So what this is saying is, if you want to just to find what you've created without any hassle, just copy this link there. Copy that link. And I just open another tab and type it. And if I click enter, you see that it gives me that thing. So that's what this thing does here. It helps you navigate your app. So let's create. I'll create another one. It will be two. Then it will be go to the mall. Then we might want to get groceries. Get groceries. Then we're going to execute that. Then we're going to say, okay, fine. Let us get all the tasks we have. And we say try it out, we'll execute, and you see, we get the list of our tasks. Then we might say, I just wanna get a single task, and that task has an ID of two. So I can go there and put it two, execute, and I get going to them all. If I put three, it would tell me that error response 404, not found, and that's expected. Um, if I want to, Edit one, I would say, try it out. I would put ID one, and I'll put ID one here again. I'll say, updated gym. And I'll say, updated cardio. Cardio, then I'll say, true, we have finished that. Then I'll execute that. You get 204, which is no content, but that says it was able to update the first one and if i go to get all tasks and i say let's show me the first one and you'll see that the first one has been updated and we have finished that task for instance if you want to delete something we can just say okay delete uh, item number two again i do that if i get a 204 it means that has been deleted if i go and get all tasks we should have one task because the other one is gone if i put two again it will say, well, two doesn't exist because it's gone. So at the core of every API, you will see that all you're doing is these four things. And this video has just given you the basic step foundation of APIs. In the next video, as we go, we'll bring in the database, we'll bring in error handling, logging. We'll go all the way up to clean architecture on how we can build this application. But we'll take it step by step. And we'll also see how we can bring in our UI, the MVC, and consume this API from another application and show you how to uh, show those tasks. So if you have been with me this far, uh, thank you very much. I hope this has been of value and 24 will be a good year for C-Sharp as it's been voted the best language of last year and it's gonna get better. So like, share, comment, subscribe. But most importantly, if you have the capacity, please uh, support the channel on Patreon, select uh, a paying membership so that we can continue giving you free content. And with that, have a good day.